Okay, everybody, can you see the first slide? Yes. Yes, uh, the information on uh, midterm exam two on April 1st. So you can see your next exam, uh, that is exam two will be held on April 1st. This means uh, next week, Wednesday. Uh, so I am discussing the uh, time frame for the exam. Uh, the first of all, uh, the syllabus should cover uh, class lecture starting from 14 through 22. This means uh, today this is 21 and then on Monday it will be 22. So basically you have to look uh, Laplace transformation, those circuit problems and the current chapter, which is the frequency response. So you need to look all numerical problems, uh, homework three and homework four as well. And you might expect total of four to five questions. Uh, the questions will be the same as the midterm exam one. Uh, here is the couple of things. You have returned your homework three. So on Monday, I will uh, return you. I mean, I will let you know the grade and uh, I will be discussing the solutions for midterm, sorry, the homework three. And you all will be returning with the homework four on Monday. Then the next day on Tuesday, I will make the solutions available. I will be posting the solution for homework for Agile. So before the exam, uh, you can see all of the solution. Now, regarding the exam time frame, as I mentioned, the exam duration is 11.30 and 12.25 p.m. This means the class time. But what I will be doing, like about 30 minutes before the start of the exam, like around 11 o'clock, I will uh, upload the exam script on the e-course app. So you all need to take a print of that and then you will start at 11.30. You will continue until 12.25. Then I will give you another 30 minutes to scan in and uh, upload it to a Dropbox. So soon I will create a Dropbox and uh, notify you. So is that time frame is fine? Like I will upload the exam paper 30 minutes before the start of the exam to allow you to take a print of it. And then after the exam, another 30 minutes for your scanning and uploading into a Dropbox. Is this fine or you need more time? That sounds good. Everybody fine? So. Actually, you need a printer because uh, you cannot write on the script, especially the numerical problems, because you need to write lots of equation, lots of calculation. Therefore, because you will be writing by pen and paper and pencil, uh, that's why you need to take a print. If it is just the like short question, simple question, or yes or no, then it is better on paper. But for the circuit problem, Say so you have to calculate something, lots of calculation. That's why you need to take it. In. So I, I hope everybody is fine. Did you okay. say we need? Did you say we need a printer for it? Uh, no, I mean uh, I will upload it on eCourseWare, like thirty oh, okay. minutes. Yeah, okay. thirty minutes before. So I will create a tab on eCourseWare, like exam papers or exam script. Uh, so around 11 o'clock you might see it available then immediately you all need to take a print and uh, from 11 30 you start writing and you stop writing at 12 25 but then i will allow you another 30 minutes to make a scan and upload on a dropbox so probably the dropbox name will be exam midterm exam two I still I did not create. I will create it soon and I will notify you. Uh, once this class is over, I'm gonna go to Walgreens and get like a uh, allergy relief medicine. 
Hello. I have allergy. I have medicine to prevent my allergies from being upset. <laughs> not medicine for once they are upset. That makes any sense. Hey, Travis, your microphone's on, buddy. <laughs> okay. So I think the exam information is fine, right? Yeah, we're good. Okay. Thank you. Okay, now uh, moving forward. So today uh, I'll be covering two main topics. One is active filters and other one is the scaling. So active filters basically consist of active elements such as transistor and operational amplifier. So you all know operational amplifier we have studied in uh, circuit analysis on that means that this is circuit codes in addition to passive elements that is R, L and C. So you remember that uh, we are discussing passive filters, passive filters consists of R, L and C, only the combination of those three. But in case of active filters, you will see that there is active elements especially the operational amplifier in addition to r and c you will not see l so the basic difference between active filters and passive filters is that in case of active filter there will not be any application of inductance that is l because uh, in real practice inductance is bulky and expensive in addition to that point, active filter sets much higher gain as compared to the uh, passive filters. So these are the two motivations to use the active filters. So however, uh, active filters typically work for the low frequency zone, for the low frequency band. On the other hand, passive filters also well for the higher frequency band. So, I mean, in next two slides, we'll be looking at two examples of uh, low pass and high pass active filter. So before that, scaling, what is that scaling? You know, to design and analyze filters and resonance circuits, or in general, any circuit analysis, sometimes it is better or convenient to deal with element values like on ohm or on henry or just on farad so although the, that on ohm on henry or on farad are not real values just simplified values or the normalized values but it makes the calculation each so once you have calculated the uh, circuit uh, parameters depending on the network like voltage value current value uh, inductor value, capacitor value, resistance value, and later transform those values into the actual realistic value. That is called scaling. So this means, in other words, for example, uh, you want to design a power network, power system network. It's huge. Now you are working in a laboratory. You just want to design it. So just assume that you have one ohm, one Henry value of inductor or non farad of capacitor. Later you transform to the actual values with the help of e scaling. So that is actually called the scaling. There is a simplified circuit, there are small numbers for ease of calculation, but later you have to convert it into actual values. That is the e scaling. So and there are two types of e scaling. One is called magnitude or impedance e scaling. Other one is called the frequency scaling. So, I mean, in later slides I will show you and that will be clarified. This is just the headlines. I think uh, everybody is fine so far. I'm fine. Okay. So, now uh, moving forward, you see, here is the example uh, circuit for the first order low pass filter along with its mathematical modeling. So if you see the circuit, uh, there is operational amplifier. 
So you all know that uh, we have studied in DC circuit analysis. There is input impedance, which is R I. And you see the feedback pair. There is parallel resistance RF and the parallel capacitor CR. So input voltage is VI and output voltage is V0. Now, based on that, let's have a look at the transfer function of it. So everybody see the very first top equation, H omega equal to V0 over VI equals to minus GF over GI. So you all know, uh, by looking the circuit diagram, this is called inverting operational amplifier because input VI is uh, placed or applied at the negative terminal. That's why in the transfer function, you can see minus. So minus GF over GI. So GF is the uh, impedance of the feedback path and GI is the input impedance. So you can see right side I have written here GI equal to RI. And in the feedback path, it's the parallel combination of resistance RF and capacitor CF. So everybody see the second line of the calculation, GF, which is equal to RF parallel on over J omega CF. I mean, this is the pleasure representation of the uh, capacitor CF. And after manipulating, we are getting RF over 1 plus J omega C to RF. Then the third line is that magnitude of H omega equal to minus RF over RI multiplied by 1 over 1 plus J omega CF into RF. This is just the calculation. I mean, easily you can uh, understand that. Or if you have a pen and paper, you can calculate. Now, see that I have concluded this is a first order low pass filter. So, therefore, why it is a low pass filter? So, if you see the uh, third line of the equation, magnitude of H omega, first put omega equal to zero in the denominator. So, if you put omega equal to zero, then in the denominator only on remains. So this means one over one is one. So, and that is expected for the low pass filter. When omega equal to zero, value should be one. And then there is a multiplier minus RF over RF, which is called the gain. That is the, I mean, new term in case of the active filter. You did not see similar term in case of the passive filter. That's why it is called that uh, active filter can provide you wider range of high value of the gain. And if you put omega equal to infinity, then it is becoming on over infinity is zero. And that makes sense. So therefore it fulfills the definition of locus filter. And then I have written in the second line that there is a low frequency gain or DC gain, which is minus RF over RF when uh, frequency omega equal to zero. And then you need to know what's the uh, corner frequency or cutoff frequency where the value would be on over root two, which is 0 0.707. So you see uh, that third equation, everybody see that denominator j omega cf rf part so if you put omega value on over cf rf then you are getting one plus j1 so you know one plus j1 means that is root two so therefore one over root two that will give you 0 0.707 that's why the corner frequency omega c is one over rf multiplied by cf so in next slide, I will uh, show you a numerical example. That time you need to remember this corner frequency expression omega C on over RF into C. 
is everybody fine so far yeah yeah just fine okay so now let's have a look and example in the next slide you see the left side there is a statement design a lopez active filter with a dc gain of four and a corner frequency of 500 hertz and i said use a 0 0.2 microfarad capacitor in your design and you see the right side is the uh, solution for that uh, Website Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Uh, we can hear you, though the internet security window that is showing up is blocking part of the PowerPoint oh, okay, slide. Okay. okay. Yeah, just, just a moment. Yeah, now, now can you see it? Now I, I can see it just fine here. Yeah, it's great, it's perfect. And now, now I think this is fine. There is an uh, internet security uh, window popped up and I crossed out that. Can you see now the left side, uh, the statement and right side, my handwritten calculation? Okay, so now uh, everybody, so based on the uh, statement on the left side, see the right side, my handwritten calculation uh, solution. First, I'm calculating the corner frequency. See, omega c 2 pi fc. So you see why I'm writing 2 pi fc? Because uh, in the statement, the frequency is given in terms of hertz. It is not in terms of radian per second. That's why first you have to convert uh, that frequency into angular frequency in terms of radian per second. That's why I am doing 2 pi fc, so 2 pi and then that 500. And that equals to 1 over rf multiplied by cf. That is the equation we looked in the previous slide. Corner frequency equal to 1 over RF multiplied by CF. And then see the next slide, I have written again, H zero, zero means the uh, DC gain equal to minus RF over R equal to minus four, because the DC gain value is given four. So this means that is ultimately RF over R equal to four. And see in the, in the statement, it says use a 0 0.2 microfarad capacitor in your design. That's why I have written CF equal to 0 0.2 microfarad. Now, see RF equal to, I am using the equation one, equation A. So RF equal to on over that. Finally, it gave me 1.59 kilo ohm resistance value. And by using the uh, equation B, that is RF over R equal to four, that gave me 397.5 ohm resistance. Now, what you have to do, because you are designing, this is design problem. So you have to see which products, which things are available in the market. So because uh, by calculation, you got those fractional number or decimal numbers, so you have to look the market, which products are available. So based on the product availability in the market, the first one, RF value, 1.6 kilo. That's why you see the last line I have written. Therefore, we use a 1.6 kilo ohm resistance for RF and a 400 ohm resistor for RF. You see the RI calculation actually got 397.5 but I said it should be 400 ohm, and, and that's all. So, everybody understands? Yep, looks good. Yeah, good so far. What yeah. is the value that you got for RF? I want to make sure I'm reading your handwriting correctly. 
Uh, so you see the RF loop, the uh, equation A in the solution. First you see, I calculated omega C equal to two pi F C. I substituted the value of F C 500 from the uh, given statement. And then that equals to one over RF C F. And you see in the third line, C F value is given 0 0.2 microfarad. I plugged in that number there. So from there, I am writing RF equal to one, A, one over two pi multiplied by 500 multiplied by 0.2, and that is given in microfarad. So I am converting it into farad by multiplying 10 to the power minus six. That gave me 1.59 kilo. Is this fine? Yes, I see what I did wrong. Thank you. Oh, okay. Okay. Also, uh, simultaneously, you are using your calculator as well. Yeah, I. Okay, great. It helps me to understand to work along as you do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Actually, you need a uh, practice after the class. Also, you need to take pen and paper and see the problem and make practice. Then you will be fine. Not difficult. Uh, just you need make practice. Okay, so uh, moving forward. Here you see, first order high pass filter. So in this case, you see the similar diagram as to the previous case. There is operational amplifier, but input parameters have been changed. In this case, uh, instead of resistance only, it's the series combination of uh, resistance and capacitance. But in the feedback part, there is only resistance which is RF and based on that now if you see the very first line of the uh, calculation transfer function which is V0 over VI equal to minus GF over GI the same as the previous case now here GF feedback path impedance equal to RF and the input impedance GI equal to Ri plus on over J omega C F. That's the uh, series combination in terms of uh, phase of domain. And the third line, magnitude of H omega, which is the transfer function equal to minus R F over R I plus on over J omega C F. So now, uh, based on this, see that I have concluded this is a first order high pass filter. So this means first put omega value zero. So if you put omega value zero, then uh, on over j zero that is giving infinity, then rf over infinity means that is zero, and that makes sense. Now put omega equal to infinity. If you put omega infinity, then on over infinity that is zero, so you are getting the result minus rf over rf and minus r over r is multiplied by one. So this means when our frequency is very high infinity, you are getting transfer function magnitude one. On the other hand, when it is zero, you are getting zero values. So that's why that is the high pass filter. And if you put uh, omega c on over r and c i, then it will give you uh, root two in the denominator. And then on over root two means that is the point 707. That's why I see the very last line, the corner frequency omega c equals to on over ri ci. So this is pretty much similar to the previous case. Previous case in case of low pass filter, it was omega c on over rf ci. In this case, this is on over all right, sir. Yeah. So everybody's fine. Yeah, it looks good. Okay. Yep. Okay. Now, I have set up on numerical problem. So for this uh, high pass filter, so everybody read the problem statement. Uh, I have written on the left side. It said design a high pass active filter with a high frequency gain of five and the corner frequency of two kilohertz. 
and use a zero point on microfarad capacitor in your design. So this is the statement. So now see my handwritten calculation on the right side. Again in this case, first I am calculating uh, omega c. So omega c, two pi of c. I am putting the fc value two kilohertz, and that gave me four pi multiplied by ten to the power three. And then the gain value is five. That's why I'm writing in the second line minus R F over R equal to minus five, which ultimately is R F over R equal to five. Now, input capacitor is given, which is zero point one microfarad. That's why in the third line I'm writing C I equal to point one multiplied by ten to the power minus six in terms of the farad. Now, see then. Uh, I am calculating R i because in the very first line, omega c equal to ultimately one over R i c i. So from there, I am calculating R i value is this seven ninety point five point seven one, and then uh, from the R f over R i equal to five equation, I am calculating R f value five multiplied by R. So uh, that gave me close to uh, four kilo. So that's why you see, finally, I have written the answer RI should be 800 ohm because that value is available in the market and for RF value, 4000 ohm, which is four kilo. And uh, this is also pretty much similar to the uh, previous problem that we discussed a few minutes back. Is this fine? Yep. yep, great. Okay. Okay, then, uh, so another uh, interesting and important discussion today is scaling that I was telling you that you have a, a simple representation of a circuit with a smaller number using like only one ohm or one Henry and one Farad. What should be the actual or realistic values? So now there are two cases. In on case, magnitude scaling, scaling means basically impedance scaling. So what I have written, look the very first bullet, impedance changed, but frequency is unchanged. This means when you are scaling, uh, when you are modifying the magnitude, this means you are changing the impedance magnitude, but you are not changing the frequency. In the other case, in the next slide I'll be showing, you are changing frequency, but you are not changing the impedance magnitude. So there are two scenarios. Okay, so now uh, everybody look, in this case, impedance change. So you can see uh, the symbol of R, L, and C. So at the bottom of R, I have written G, R equal to R. This means impedance of R is R. For inductor, I have written G, L, to j omega m. So you all know that. And for capacitor, g c equal to 1 over j omega c. Now, now uh, see the next line. I have written j r prime equal to k multiplied by g r. This means k multiplied by r. You see the new term I introduced, which is k m. So k m stands for magnitude scaling factor. So everybody note down in your uh, note. KM means magnitude scaling factor. This means original value was R and then you have to multiply by factor to get the modified value or the changed value. Now, I mean, soon I will uh, discuss on numerical problem. Then it will be clarified to you how you will get the magnitude scaling factor. Okay, uh, then see the next line, G L prime. You have impedance J omega L, and now you want to modify, you want to change it. That's why I have written K M G L. That equals to J omega K M into L. Because I don't want to change frequency, see the topmost bullet, frequency will remain unchanged. That's why I'm writing J omega. 
but uh, km is multiplied with L. This means that km is that magnitude scaling factor. Similarly, see the GC prime, I have written km into GC, this means km into 1 over j omega c, that equal to 1 over j omega c over km. Here you see, uh, because I want to keep uh, omega as it is, that's why j omega and then c uh, in the previous line came as multiplied, it was in the numerator, but I put it in the denominator, but the value remains the same. So what you can conclude, see the leftmost uh, bottom side, that green color, I have written R prime equal to K multiplied by R. This means for the magnitude scaling or impedance uh, scaling situation, R will be changed, R will be multiplied by the K. That's why that is the new R, R prime. So L will be L prime, K multiplied by L. C will be changed into C prime, that will be C over K. And I have written omega prime equal to omega. Because frequency will not change, that's why resonant frequency will not change. So you see on the right side, I have made three calculations, omega naught prime, B prime, and Q. So what I am doing, see the first calculation right side, omega naught prime. So omega naught, you know, resonant frequency, which is on over root over L prime, C prime, and substituting the values of L prime, C prime, from the left side for L prime I have put K into L for C prime I have put C over K. Then you say K and K got cancelled. Ultimately you are getting one over root over L C, which is the usual definition of uh, omega. That's why I have written equal to omega. This means resonant frequency will not change in case of the impedance or magnitude scaling. So the conclusion is omega not prime equal to omega. Now see, how about the bandwidth, V prime? So I thought that, okay, uh, bandwidth will be changed. That's why I have written V prime equal to, although uh, I have written V prime equal to B, I should write equal to B at last, but uh, th that will be the conclusion that bandwidth will not be changed. Because you see, V prime equal to R prime over L prime. And that is in case of series resonance. And then what is R prime? Km into R. What is L prime? Km into L. You see, Km, Km gets cancelled. Ultimate result, R over L. So what is R over L? That is the uh, original definition of bandwidth in case of series resonance. So therefore, in this case, conclusion is B prime equal to B. Now, how about quality factor? So you all know the definition of quality factor in terms of resonant frequency and bandwidth B, Q equal to omega naught prime over B prime. But oh, you see above omega naught prime is not changed, that is omega naught, B prime has not changed, that is B. So ultimate result, omega naught over B. That's why finally, uh, I have concluded omega naught, B and Q are not changed. Uh, everybody, could you follow me? What I told? Yeah, looks yes. good. Yep. Yeah. Does, so you had said this is only for series resonance? Uh, yeah, series resonance. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, when uh, you will be solving the problem, you just need to keep the uh, expression handy in front of you, then you will be fine. Okay, then now let's have a look at the frequency scaling, and then I will show you one problem, and it will be fully clear to you. Okay, now look at the frequency scaling. This means frequency will change, but impedance will remain unchanged. So everybody see the topmost bullet. Frequency scaling means you are now playing with the frequency, but you have to keep impedance value same. I mean, it is pretty interesting. So everybody know the calculation on the left side, GL prime, that equal to J omega 
kf l prime so in this case you know i have introduced new factor kf that is k this stands for frequency scaling factor so everybody note down k means frequency scaling factor because in this case frequency will change and then i am expecting l will be changed which is l prime and then i have written you see j omega l so everybody see that i have started by writing j l prime and in the bottom i have written j omega k f into l prime but finally i have equated it with j omega l because that is my goal that impedance magnitude will not change this means what is happening l is getting changing l prime is l over kf so everybody could you follow that first expression yep okay then similarly see the second line gc prime equal to 1 over j omega kf c prime so then what is the c prime c prime is c over k so because the the impedance will not change uh, that's why the c prime will be c over k so in this case the conclusion is is in the green color everything r prime equal to r you see uh, in case of resistance it is independent of frequency that's why it is not divided or not multiplied by k f but l prime is l over k c prime equal to c over k and then the new thing omega prime equal to k multiplied by omega now the resonant frequency will be changed uh, in case of the frequency scaling so to understand that everybody see the right side of my calculation i am calculating resonant frequency omega not prime equal to 1 over root over l prime c prime and i substituting the values of l prime c prime uh, that i calculated on the left side if i plug in is l prime l over k c prime c over k so ultimately you are getting k multiplied by omega this means in this case resonant frequency will be changed it will be multiplied by the uh, frequency spelling factor that is that k with the uh, original uh, resonant frequency similarly for b prime it is r prime over l prime so r prime is r prime, r prime equal to r but l prime equal to l over k that's why k uh, got into numerator and finally it is k multiplied by b this means in this case bandwidth got changed how about quality factor so q equal to omega not prime over b prime so omega not prime equal to k k f omega not and b prime equal to k f into b but k f k f got cancelled finally omega not over b this means q was not changed so now uh, you see at the bottom i have written general formula now it can be frequency scaling it can be impedance scaling there are two types of different equation but how you can generalize in terms of one single equation that is the meaning of that general formula so everybody see under the general formula i have written r prime equal to k multiplied by r i mean just hold here everybody just see and then i am explaining l prime equal to k over k multiplied by m c prime equal to c over k into k and omega prime equal to k into omega now this is the general formula from there you can get the conclusion when it is frequency scaling and when it is magnitude scaling now everybody see on the right side i have written the green color when there is no magnitude scaling assume k n equal to 1 so now in that general formula you plug in k n equal to 
So this means you are getting R prime R, L prime L over K, C prime C over K. This means there is no magnitude scaling means you are putting in those equation K value ones. This means that is the frequency scaling case. On the other hand, see the next line I have written. When there is no frequency scaling, this means you assume K value one in those equation. This means that is the impedance scaling. So everybody understands? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Okay. I mean, uh, because first time you are looking these things, so it might be a little bit uh, complicated, but uh, these are not difficult. You will be fine. So now, uh, moving forward, see, there is a problem. Everybody see the circuit, although I have said the solution to this problem is shown in next slide. So first you see, everybody look the circuit. Uh, in the statement I says a fourth order Butterworth low pass filter. So here you need not to be worried about that fourth order Butterworth uh, filter circuit. This is a specific type of filter. So uh, you don't need to study about that. So this is just the example. Uh, and then it says to design the circuit, the cutoff frequency has been chosen omega c equal to one radian per second. You see the omega c value in the statement says one radian per second. This means this is normalized case. This is simplified case. And then I say scale the circuit for a cutoff frequency of 50 kilohertz using 10 kilo ohm register. So everybody see in the circuit, there are two resistance value on I mean, series with the uh, voltage source, just one. And another one ohm register at the output terminal, which is on. So you see just one ohm on. These are just the uh, simplified version. These are just the uh, normalized version. You have to find out what are the actual values of those resistance, capacitor, and inductor based on the given information. So the statement says, okay, scale the circuit for a cutoff frequency of 50 kilohertz using 10 kilo ohm resistors. This means problem is suggesting to use 10 kilo ohm resistor. This means first replace those to one ohm, one ohm by 10 kilo ohm. So therefore, that is your base point. Now, based on that 10 kilo ohm resistor, 50 kilohertz uh, cutoff frequency information and the uh, normalized cutoff frequency value omega c1 radian per second. You have to find out what are the two capacitor values and what are the two inductor values. That is the statement. So everybody is fine. Uh, this is not the solution. I mean, next slide I will show you the solution. But do you understand the problem? Yes. Okay. So now I am going to that solution. Yes, see my uh, handwritten calculation. You see, uh, under the at the bottom of that circuit, I have written solution. So I want to go with the general formula because it is the case of both frequency scaling and magnitude scaling. It is not just one because it says okay, use ten kilo ohm resistor. This means it is suggesting you to consider the magnitude scaling. Also, it says, okay, use the cutoff frequency of 50 kilohertz. This means it is telling you to consider the frequency scaling as well. So that's why first you have to find out two factors. One is the frequency scaling factor, and other one is that magnitude scaling factor. First, you have to find out those two factors. So that's why you see, I have written k equal to omega c prime over omega c. I mean, because you know, in the previous slide, we noticed that uh, omega c prime equal to k into omega c. That's why I have written that. So in the denominator, omega c is one, which was given cut of frequency omega c one radian per second. That was the normal. But then the actual value 
problem is suggesting to consider 50 kilohertz. So I'm converting 50 kilohertz into radian per second. That's why two pi multiplied by 50 multiplied by 10 to the power three. And just I have written in simplified form in pi multiplied by 10 to the power five. And you can express in a number just for easiness I have written in that. Okay, and then see the next line, r prime equal to 10 multiplied by 10 to the power three. You see in the statement, because it says the last line of the statement, use 10 kilo ohm resistor. That is the R prime, I mean the changed value of resistance. Now based on that, see the right side K equal to R prime over R. Because you know R prime equal to K into R. So and then the R value, normalized value was one, which was given in the circuit. So based on that, you are getting K value 10 to the power four. So this means that now you got two factors, frequency scaling factor K and magnitude scaling factor K. Now based on those two values, you have to find out the actual values for the two inductors given in the circuit diagram and the two capacitor values given in the circuit diagram. So first I'm going to calculate L on pi. You see, because there are two inductors in the circuit, on is like 1.848 Henry, other on is 0 0.765 Henry. So that's why there are two calculations, one is L on prime, other on is L to prime. So when it is L on prime, you see the general formula that we looked in the previous slide, K over K multiplied by L. So because I already calculated Km and K, I am just plugging in those things. And L on value in this case, 1.848. This means the uh, left side inductor in the circuit diagram. Now that gave me 58.82 millihenry. See that this value got changed. Now the second inductor value, L2 prime, uh, and then again, I'm using those KF and KM that give me 24.35 milliamp. So everybody is fine so far? Yeah, everything looks good. Yes. Then similarly, I am calculating C on prime. So it, it does not matter, I mean, which one is C on prime, C2 prime. It's like up to you, uh, which value you will be telling C on C2. It, it does not matter. Just you have to calculate for both capacitor, both inductor. That's the thing. So then C on prime equal to C over Km into K. Just you have to write down the, this equation uh, that we looked in the previous slide correctly, then you will be getting correct result. So in this case, C on prime, I have assumed the left side capacitor in the circuit, which was 0.765 Farad. For that, finally, I got. 243.5 picofarad. You see the value got changed in the actual circuit. Similarly, the C2 prime is uh, for the other capacitor, which was 1.848, you got 588.2 picofarad. So then this will be the actual. So you might draw a new circuit. I did not draw because you just need the values of inductor capacitor register. So in the modified circuit, the resistance, two resistance value will be substituted by 10 kilo, and then inductor and capacitor values will be substituted by those right now what we calculated. That's all. So this is called like frequency scaling and impedance scaling. And this is very, very realistic situation. Um, if you're working in um, some uh, company where you to design a filter circuit or some even normal circuit, then you might need to use this technique. So this is very, very useful in your real life and in your job market. Okay, so is everybody fine? Yeah, use some more practice, but you know, that'll be okay. you know, homework or whatever. Okay, so therefore, I mean, uh, I don't have any more slide for today. Uh, 
everybody please uh, submit your homework by monday then immediately i will be looking i will be grading and then i will make it available by uh, tuesday for you because you have the exam on wednesday also uh, uh, soon i will post the solution for homework 3 and i will let you know the grade for homework 3 and even uh, probably on monday i will uh, make the solutions for homework 4 available i will be posting on e-course and i will notify you so then you all are ready uh, for the exam uh, one wednesday okay so does anybody have any questions comment anything nope i don't believe so no this okay. makes sense okay so thank you everybody so now let me uh, stop sharing the uh, screen. So can you see me? Yeah. Yes. Ah, okay. Okay. So with that, then uh, we'll see you on Monday. Sounds good. We'll see you Monday. See you on Monday. Okay. Monday. Monday. okay. So have a good nice weekend. And have a good weekend. Right, you too. Okay. Bye. Thank you.